President Obama has been uh, talking lately a lot about education. Yesterday, he went to a middle school right up the road here in Delphi, um, in Maryland, uh, and um, signed another executive order, uh, putting some uh, federal resources into providing uh, Internet hookups in our schools. Here's yeah. why he said this is so important. In a country where we expect free Wi-Fi with our coffee, we should definitely demand it in our schools. Amen. Pretty basic, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there are two great myths out there about um, technology in the classroom. One is everyone says it's the great equalizer. But that's true only if everyone has the same equipment. Mm -hmm. um, when you're still in a home with dial-up service, you are not on a level playing field with people who have more technology in their house than too many of our schools have. So that's the first myth, that you really do have to provide it for every child, or it's not leveling the p playing field. The second thing it was that when we first got into technology, it was like this, once we buy the computers, then we're done. Oh, yeah, no, right. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing investment, and it, it's, it changes so rapidly. Uh, we used the electric typewriters in our school a long, long time. You could use those for five or seven or eight years. You can't do that with technology. And so part of your planning process is just has to be how do you replace that. And hooking up to uh, the bandwidth is so critical. And in what President Obama said, it's not only connecting them with broadband, but they also get the hardware in the buildings that they necessarily they need, as well as equipment for the people who have them, iPads and so on. Um, how, first of all, how much progress have we made in providing bandwidth in all, in all America's schools? Are we just getting started? No, we've made a lot of progress. There are just too many places that don't have it. And uh -huh. President Obama's line is perfectly, you, you expect it everywhere you go. The idea that there are oh, some yeah. schools that still don't have it is just crazy. You wouldn't go to a coffee shop that didn't have it, right? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't go, I mean, you go, today we can get on a train that didn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, so then, um, how has it, I can tell you that the, the internet, I mean, has totally, totally revolutionized the world of the media, right? The way oh, we yeah. do our show, for example. What, what, I don't even think you probably know the answer to how this is changing education in America oh, or will, right? It, but it has must be changed it dramatically. And I, I think the, the most important question that has to be addressed is, um, how do we use technology as a tool to assist in student learning? Uh, sometimes we get in this either or, and you have advocates that I know, we don't need people in the building, we'll just get computers for mm. everybody. That's not a solution, I don't believe. I believe that sometimes they call it blended learning, but the idea is how do you as a teacher use all of this incredible resource of technology to enhance the learning experience? And I think we're making great progress in that. I'm amazed at uh, what, the, you know, the smart boards, when they go in there, what they can do in a classroom. Um, it's exciting yeah. to watch teachers. But part of you have to give people the professional development. I remember I was in a, a teacher's classroom. She was a math teacher, like I had been. And it was during her prep period. And I said, so what's your next class? And she said, pre-calculus. And I said, show me how you would use this smart board in a pre-calculus class. Well, over the next five to seven minutes, she just wowed me. And that wasn't available when I was in the mm -hmm. classroom. Um, and I said, how did you learn all this? She said, well, I came in every day over the summer. And I thought, what kind wow. of a system wow. is this? Yeah. You buy a piece of technology, but you don't invest $1 in, in giving people the opportunity to learn really how to use it and to enhance. And, you know, it's like the calculators of today. If you only use it to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you're not using its capacity. And so part of the real development, professional development, is giving these resources and then really figuring out how do I – maximize my use of its capacity to enhance learning. Are we at the stage right now where if you go in a, a, a second or third grade class, uh, uh, fourth, fifth, whatever, uh, in America today that you'll see every kid sitting at, at uh, his or her desk with a laptop open? I think we'll, th we're very close to that. In, in many places, they are doing that. And it, But again, Isn't it's not amazing? just having a, a iPad or a laptop there. Yeah. The question is, how do you use that? Sure. Um, because there are, there are applications and uses of that that just bring learning, just brings it alive so that students can give you a report with embedded web links that take you to some place so that you can actually see some. You don't have to write about it. I've got a video embedded in my report. So the potential is great. What's really changed is that schools used to be a place you went to get 
information or knowledge. Now you can get that anywhere, but that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It changes the role and function of school, but it doesn't change the need. You still have to create that environment. Now, the other exciting thing on education that President Obama and a lot of others are talking about uh, is uh, early childhood education. Uh, Bill de Blasio, elected mayor of New York on this is his issue, his issue. The governor of New York has adopted this, and many governors have. The governor of New York has adopted. Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo only differ on how they're going to pay for it, but not on the need for it. So this, and you've talked about this a long time, this is really taking off, isn't it? Thank goodness. And why is, and why is it so important? I think people are realizing you just can't deny the research out there. It, there is overwhelming evidence that for every dollar you invest in that early childhood, the return is what one report I just read uh, was 7 to 10 percent. But more than that, what they found, this is from the uh, Children's Defense Fund in their latest report, and when they, they just see it as such a springboard to opportunity. If you look at kids who've had early childhood and those that don't, those that have are more likely to graduate from high school, to hold a job, they make more money, and they are less likely to commit a crime. Every statistic that we measure, that we want success in, is enhanced by early childhood. And I always look at, you know, there is no family of means who ever says, I have a choice. Do I want my kids to have preschool or not? And they choose no. No one does that. Yeah, yeah. So if it's right for those of us who could afford it to give it to our kids, why isn't it right for every child in America? So when President Obama first, a year ago, talked about this, to, and it was a great plan, I believe. So he starts out with heavy investment from the federal, small investment from the state. And then over a period of time, the state picks up that responsibility. So, and you know, the, the states that have invested, the top five, according to the Children's Defense Fund, were uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, and Illinois. And when you look at the overall achievement in those states, it's high. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it pays. We know it works. And what an investment in our own society to say every kid in America ought to have that. And are we talking about kindergarten? Are we talking about pre-kindergarten? Pre pre-kindergarten. So starting? Age three and four. Wow. You know, in Finland, uh, they're held up as the number one system in the world. They weren't always number one. And if you go back into about 1990, they had about 70% of their kids in preschool. Now it's 97%. And the results show. You know, anyone who's ever had a child of their own or a niece or a nephew, they are like sponges. They will learn anything and everything. And so if you expose them to things, they learn it. Well, that's what we need to give to kids. I, I call it a rich curriculum growing up, that they have opportunities. It's not just book learning. The opportunity to play soccer, to do dance, to do things that explore what their interests are. Um, and those opportunities, kids love to learn. Uh, somehow, we, if we could just keep that all the way through school. I know. 